This is, uh, already. Uh, here, let me yeah, yeah, let's make sure we're we actually go. properly centered on there. <laughs> All right, we're good. All right. Alrighty. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Valpo Esports Stream. Today we have our NECC, our first NECC match of the season, and we're getting straight into it already. No dilly dallying today. Right into it. Leading Jaden with the Young Link against a. Uh, Unless I have it backwards. No, no, no. I, I think because I, I heard the Young Link get chosen. Okay, so. yeah. I was gonna say. So, uh, I thought we were leading Jaden. Sorry, we have a Shulk now, so I saw the Shulk and went, "Wait a minute, is that us?" Not quite, not quite. No, we have Jaden on the Young Link here. Uh, ignore the uh, titles on the bottom there. They are currently backwards. Yeah, but so, I think that's and just... I'm glad to see it, though, because we have taken a nice lead here to start. Yep, very nice. With very little percent on Jaden, too, which is nice to see. And, uh, well, Shulk didn't see much in that vision, huh? Unfortunately not. That counter does not always work the best, and we see a prime example of that there. It's such a visually pleasing counter, it just doesn't function. <laughs> it is very unfortunate in that regard. We see the backslash come out, and we see just the, the caging that this young Link is doing currently. Being able to... Oh nice. my goodness! Jaden already has taken two stocks with only 67% uh, on him, very low. Yes. So, doing really well here, putting a good showing for our first match of any season this year. Yeah, so it's always very nice to see that. Um, with such a strong start, you know, when every single stock matters, it's always important to see the low percentages. Now you got to be careful, especially against forward smashes like that. Yep, and that almost killed across the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Jab three solely as the punish. I love it. Love it. Hey, there you go. Sometimes that's all you really need. Oh, the, the counter the actually vision. worked that time. Working, but not as intended. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, that's a lot of Smash Bros. So you know what? We are perfectly okay with that. Yes. Alrighty. And then with Shulk, you got to be careful because you can only switch to Smash Monado and deal lots of damage. But, but we will not does even have. Not the matter. Jaden coming out with a three stock. Very, very nice. A wonderful start to what will hopefully be a great game from here. Knock on wood. <laughs> we yeah, did not take very, any chances Very, very nice here. showing from Jaden. Just walking out with a three stock. Yep. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. So now we will have to see, because now the ball is in uh, the other court here. Yep. So we have... So one of the differences between Gleck and NECC, you guys um, may or may not know if you watched uh, last semester, is that one, the obvious of that, there was actually 12 stocks, uh, as you can see, uh, as opposed to the nine in Gleck, that is because it was 4v4. If you do the math real quick, it's kind of crazy. Yep, yep. But another difference um, that is really big for us competitors, it's kind of hard to really show on stream, is that um, in Gleck, when you're putting in your next player, um, you're, you don't actually tell them what character they're banning stages for, but in NECC, if it is not the starting match, um, we are actually told what character they're going to be throwing in um, before we pick our stage bans. Oh, I did not know that. That was really important to know because... Yep. So, so we actually get to know what character we're banning for. That is really nice. Which is a big difference. There are a lot of different stages with a lot of different characters that are really good for certain ones. Yep. You face a character like, let's say, um, uh, Sonic, for example, you know you're going to want to get rid of something like Kalos. Um, meanwhile, if you're facing, you know, Dr. Mario, you, whatever stage, really, to gimp him. But here we see the Captain Falcon coming yep. out. It looks like they are running it back. Yep, back to, to PS2. Looking like true Smash players, just returning to PS2 every time. Fun, fun, fun. And into it. Jaden, you don't have to taunt, actually, because Jaden did not lose a stock. So, yes. Jaden actually took a little bit of advantage of that. I like to see it. Yeah. So that is that is the big difference there. If you do not know the rule on that, sometimes all it takes is that one little bit of time loss to be able to get a huge and leaded advantage. And that one little opening has gotten Jaden 113%. And that is the first time he's gotten hit. That is huge. So much damage here. Just looking for the kill now. Yep. I have to try to find it. Oh, that was an up air. Yep. Might have just been a miss input, but uh -huh. Jaden's still working around this Captain Falcon quite well. Not being able to find a big opening. Yep. Um thing is we, we see a lot of it here. Um, there's a lot of t different times where these different projectiles are just snuffing out this Captain Falcon's moves, keeping them in place and really preventing them from doing anything. And 
this Captain Falcon apparently wants himself out of here, but we will and see. Four throws the killing throw, but not quite. Nice Ooh. bomb there, but sends him the wrong way. Jane was Jane was quite obviously setting up for the bomb to send him the other way. Yep. And because he had positioned for it to send the expected way, uh, it sent the opposite, so he was not ready to cover that. But there's so much damage in this Captain Falcon. Just searching for the kill. That is one of the things that Youngling can sometimes struggle with, is actually sealing out socks. But when you manages get a true to combo do like it. That. Took him to 200 to get to it, though. So it gave Captain Falcon plenty of time to get some good, solid percent on the Jaden back. We'll have to see. This Captain Falcon's been landing a couple of decent hits, but will he be able to land one to actually finish the deal himself there? Because if they're both living until 200, well, then it will mitigate the damage that has um, uh, been done already. And Jaden just setting up these projectiles is so good. Just keeping Captain Falcon away. Oh, just barely. Jaden loses his first stock, but it's really close and has already taken one of Captain Falcon. So no matter what, Jaden has already gone positive. Yes, it's very nice. We've already seen a, a four to one difference here in stocks between the two. And getting the two frame with that is very nice as well. And we're getting to the same situation we had last stock of just so much percent, but struggling to find the kill. But one thing that you start to find when you play these characters that can struggle to kill, that Ooh. still was able to go into the second hit? That's crazy. It looked like the Kemp Falcon was able to react to that almost. I think he was, but ended up getting hit by the second hit anyway. But you know what? We will take it. Managing to steal out the sock. Already so positive. That's ve very nice. I mean, you know, when, when you have a true combo like that, sometimes you're just not ready for them to delay it or something like that, allowing for the bigger hit. Uh, I'm not sure if it was necessary in that case, but that was more damage that was done because he waited on the second hit. Yep. And either way, has gotten so much damage in this Falcon just because of that. That S smash manages to take the stock oh. so early and almost, not quite, going for the edge guard. Oh! oh, what a smart play. Even if the move it, didn't work. The move work, fell out, but we got the stock anyway. We love to see it here. Very interesting. You know, he was probably ready to, um, the Camp Falcon was ready to be sent off far to the side. So yep, he was he just was. getting himself out of, um, um out of hit stun, and instead he just fell out. That knee came out, and it was all game from there. Yep. And so now we are already moving into the third character here. Now, will we actually see a stage ban here? Because they know the character, and it's possible that they'll actually go for some stage bans. But a lot of times, um, uh, where we are, it's much better just to ban with what you're not comfortable with. If there are three stages on the list that you don't like, get them out of the way. Yep, it all depends on the character which they get to know, we don't know yet, so we get to know when you guys do. Exactly. Uh, Jaden has already taken half of his team stocks, and oh, he has uh, we are lost one. That is very impressive to go this far into it. And we are Smash players because we are going back to PS2. Hey, look at this. No, ew, get off the screen. <laughs> Ah, uh, a, a dark pit uh, to match uh, the no. co-commentary Oh my here. word, he was having so much fun with this matchup, warming up. He was loving every second of it, I can uh, tell you. I am sure of that. Now, we got to make sure he loses the stock yep, he first. Yeah, he has to lose one. You have to lose one. Wait, wait. There, there we, we are. Yeah. Okay. I can do anything fancy on the way down, but you know what? Sometimes the simple way is the best way. I've forgotten so many times I can't blame him myself, so... Well, we will have to see here what they what he decides to do. We have seen a bit of spaghetti here to start off the match, but now we're starting to settle into a more um, a normal neutral here between these two characters. And Jaden has so much fun in this matchup. Oh, uh, yes. He loves this matchup. It's his absolute favorite. If you can't tell by the sarcasm dripping from my voice, he does not have fun playing against at least my dark bit. So we'll see how this dark pit can stand up. So it does mean Jaden has plenty of experience against it. That is very true. And, you know, sometimes no matter how good or bad a matchup is, experience can be the most important thing. It really can. Very nice. In my experience, or yeah, in my time, experience outranks everything. So we'll see how that's able to come in here. And no ooh. punish on that, which is very nice. Good, very good for Jaden. And uh, oh. forward smash that. Didn't hey, that worked nice. too. It, it gave him the chance to hit another thing on the way down. So, yep. I... so hits up B, um, if you didn't know, actually can't snap ledge in the first 24 frames. 
Ah, so gotcha. if you are too close to the ledge like that pit was and you upbeat, you actually can't snap ledge. It has a window there. So you actually have to be a little bit away from the ledge to be able to snap. And he was just simply too close and got punished for it. Yep. I say sometimes all it takes is tiny little mistakes like that. All it takes is being the tiniest bit off, and you can either take or lose stocks just like that. Yep, but able to take Jaden's second stock out. Let's see if Jaden can get at least one more. Has already gone so positive, which is incredible to see. But we'll see if we can get even one more. Yep. Every when every stock matters so much, we'll take every one we can get. Um, we can see the experience already coming in, and as, as he's been able to weave through all of these um, uh, pit arrows with relative ease uh, due to all the training he's had here. <laughs> yeah, he does not like having to deal with pit arrows. <laughs> that bomb's going to hit you, bud. There you go. <laughs> hey, he, he dodged out of the way eventually. He tried to get that one last arrow off. Yep. But Jaden getting some percent Ooh. back of his own. Aerial side B not, does not have the same kill power punch that Grounded does, so... It Jayden still gave lives. him the advantage for a little bit. We'll see what he's. We'll see what this pit is able to do with it. Uh, we see being able to take back stage here and now gaining stage control back. Yep, that's gonna do it. Until the reflector. So Jaden seven three. Very impressive. Very very nice showing. And with this, um, the pit also having lost a stock means that we will not only be up in pure stocks, but also just overall, but also in this upcoming match as well. Which sometimes that's all it takes just to save yourself that one last little bit of health. Yep. So now we need to see who we are throwing in next. Yes. I actually don't know. Um, I recall, I think the plan is probably going to be fit. Mm, I okay. guess. Uh, ah, the captain himself. Of course, everyone here has a ton of experience against Pit because. Yes. I exist, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so I th I think the play is probably fits. Um, I think that pretty much sense. anyone will do fine here. Yeah. Um, I'll say we'll see when they come in. It seemed like their play style was a little bit different um, uh, from yours. Um, so we'll see how quickly they're able to adapt uh, to this uh, new and different dark pit here. Definitely uh, seemed um, less combo oriented than me. Yeah, de uh, definitely. Uh, so, you know, that might actually be a bit of an advantage because um, less advantage state means more neutral, so more chances for him to mess up. Exactly, exactly. Yet, when you when that when a stray hit doesn't lead to forty percent and only leads to what ten sometimes. Exactly. It can be a big difference, and so perhaps a character that can make the most out of every inter interaction they do win, not having to worry about getting combo as much, could be pretty big here. So we'll have to see who they end up going with. But, of course, um, they get, because um, let's see, we get to see the all the information first before even having to worry about the stage bands here. So we'll see. <laughs> Fitz yes. just peeking through the door. <laughs> he knows what's up. He does. Well, Ah, it looks like I was actually wrong in my guess. Yes. But we have another person coming in who absolutely loves playing against Dark Pit. His favorite thing in the world. And on top of that, we can see that he is trying hard because he's actually switching the stage. He actually We're not worried going about banning the boys. stage. Woo! <laughs> there you go. And so now we'll see as the pit loses one how this game goes. Yep, so starting it off, we have decided to throw in Spencer with the Roy, having a ton of experience in this matchup, but also. Uh, Knows his weaknesses in this matchup, too, which is going to be quite important. Yes. Uh, one of the biggest advantages here is the fact that even though it may not be the strongest part of the sword, uh, Roy does, in fact, have, in general, bigger hitboxes than Pit does. And when he does get in, it's still even more deadly. Yep. So I can see the uh, process here of picking the Roy here. And immediately going for insane damage and near, maybe even a kill with that hit. Holy cow. Very nice, but percents are very even here. But stocks are not. I think that one interaction there shows this matchup. Just um, uh, Pit just barely getting um, uh, his move out too slowly. Yep, that is pretty much this matchup. Roy is going to have faster frame data. 
And sometimes more range, depends on the move. And uh, kill power, he's got you there too. He's... With that side B, being able to take it from the side. So we have the kill power in spades here, especially if you're able to outspace a laggy move like side B. So already one stock up with Spencer having yet to lose one. Uh, and he might not here. Depends on how much he is able to cook on this pit. And, you know, we've Ooh. seen Spencer cook a lot. And oh, he yeah. almost did it again with that forward smash. And I'll say Roy is fiery, so his ability to cook is quite high. Uh, we'll see here. And, oh. and that should be a stock. Yep, there you go. So he, he may not be the most combo-oriented pit, but he does have those down. So that is something to make sure to keep an eye out for in the future. Yep, knowing your kill confirms with a combo character is so important. Yes. Being able to actually close out stocks is such a skill that some people uh, really overlook. Without a doubt. doesn't matter how high you get them. If you take an extra 50% just trying to kill them, then you've lost so much of your lead. Yep. Uh, Spencer trying to extend his lead here. Already has a ton of damage. Only needs a couple good hits. Ooh. Nice just air dodge straight lead. to the up smash. Oh! Nice parry F tilt. What great recognition being able to see that with the parry you'll have just enough left to hit him like that. Very good. Getting the sweet spot on the F tilt too just sealed that pits stock away brutal Very roy nice. does so much damage and kills so early as we saw there i mean the pit was at what like 100 810 110 ish somewhere around there yeah and that was just like not even a question yep died no questions asked for about full distance so yeah again roy not lacking in the kill power department on his uh, sweet all. spots he can definitely kill really well yes uh, if I remember right, uh, Roy's side B sweet spot is stronger than Limit Cross Slash. Wow, that is crazy. Limit Cross yep. Slash being a powerful move that literally <laughs> takes a lot of charging to do. The side B, on the other hand, Roy's is side B. just a move that yep. you can throw out. Which is why you never take Roy to Town and City. Yep. Never. You will <laughs> he die. He will kill you at 30. <laughs> so early. I play K Roll and I've one of the heaviest characters in the game, and I've died at extremely low percents to Roy on the side like that. Yep, Roy can kill absurdly Oof. early in some stages, but able to put it to use and taking that stock from the pit. We have now lost four of our stocks, but they have lost nine of theirs. Uh, that's quite that's a pretty good ratio, if you ask me. I would certainly say so. We'll see if we can keep this lead going into this next match. We'll see, because... Um, Eventually, we'll get to the stage bands. Exactly. Eventually. Exactly. Uh, Only that a that bit is longer. one of the downsides of being able to know what the character is, is you have to wait for an extra transition of conversation, yes. which just makes it take just that little bit longer. But for those competing, it is actually quite beneficial. Just yes. makes spectating a bit longer. Without a doubt. And it looks like we are going to small battlefield. Yeah. So it's PS2, but smaller. I love Small Battlefield. My favorite, like my favorite legal stage. I think I have to. I think I have to agree with you on that one. And we are seeing a Sephiroth here on screen. And we're seeing a lot of characters we have experience against. You will not see me complaining any single time. We've seen a Shulk, which we have some experience against now. Seen a Dark Pit, which we have a ton of experience against. We also see a Sephiroth, which you know we are not lacking in that department either. So. We'll see how much experience, uh, how much that experience is able to help Spencer immediately oh trying God. to kill him. He hit him at zero and wanted him dead. And you know what? That is why I love oh. watching Spencer. Yep, that's he, exactly it. He sees his opponent at any percent and is searching for the kill. Yeah, and especially in a matchup like this where Sephiroth, despite being a big character versus Roy, is not a heavy one, which means all it takes is one stray hit at ledge, even at this percent, one F smash right here will easily destroy Sephiroth. So this Sephiroth has to be careful with every move they make because their life is on the line. Yep, if I remember correctly, Sephiroth oh! is actually lighter than Kirby, but that down smash going to break the shield into losing the stock. Look, Giga Flare. Yep. Oh. No, that is not how that move works. 
that uh, that Octo Slash hitbox is massive. Because uh, one of the things we have yet to touch on is we talked so much about Roy's sweet spots and his range in the last match, but oh. now his range is being outdone. Does not matter on that stock though. Yeah. The question here is how much you can get in and deal damage before the Sephiroth is able to make space after each hit. We see after one little interaction there, the Sephiroth already had taken 35 and is now almost up to 60. Is Jeez. up to 60. Yeah, Crazy damage. To slash. Learned to not counter that move. Very nice, very nice. The adaptation. If good job. Yikes! Purpose per perfectly being able to hop around that counter to F smash him. Like I said, that is a light character, but to be fair, most characters would have died to that there. Yeah, most that characters was a would have died there. Brutal attack right there. That just Sephiroth is wow. so light. It really is. He he may be big, and he may have those um, uh, angel wings, but I think that just means he's a bird. So I think those birds, I think those bones are very hollow. That must be for him to be that light. I believe he's lighter than Kirby, which is insane. That's the literal puffball of air. Yep. If I remember right, isn't he like lore-wise heavier than Cloud? But then in Smash, they said, "Nah, we're good." Yikes! Oh. Yup, that's gonna come. Oh. oh my word! He's just barely alive. He my alive. goodness! He's and living. That that might be that might be the one opportunity needed. That, that just might be all he needs. He's back in center stage. Has oh under my control god! And calls it out with Absol the forward smash. Absolutely brutal to take another stock. Easily. Nice job. Holy cow! And going from nearly losing that to taking that stock within wow. seconds. Absolutely brutal. Dang! What a showing. Very, very nice. Ah, and we, I see a comment from Mr. Goldshroom appreciating Spencer's work. Ah, <laughs> uh, 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 yes. Very nice, very Spencer nice. Spencer patting himself on the back. Hey, you know, <laughs> when you get the smash attack like that, I mean, that yeah. that's all you need. I mean, honestly, just baiting out that smash attack, put a couple effects on that, and that will look super showy in a, in a montage reel. Exactly. So. No, it what that actually is, is uh, I believe we're watching the stream out there on Spencer's computer, so it's locked in <laughs> So it looks like he just said nice job to himself. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, the, oh, it's oh. not his computer. I, okay, I am just wrong. All cool. Right. Hello, glad you were Hi. able to catch the stream. Glad Hello. you were able to come Thank in and... Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> glad you were able to come in and um, uh, uh, watch, watch your son kick some butts here. So good stuff. Yep, with the, the smash attacks. What percents was he killing at? I mean, I, I think that was at like 80, right? Was that around uh, 80? I think the forward smash right at the end was at like 170. Was that at 170? They were at really equal percents, but didn't he kill him at like 60 earlier? Yeah, no. That, when you've like, got bird bones, you die easily. That's how it goes. Exactly, he is. I mean, you'd think the, the sword that length in of itself would have a weight that much. Like, you would swords think aren't so. right. No, not by any means. <laughs> Especially and one so, like five times the normal yeah. length. Yeah, I mean we'll see. A Sephiroth can also do quite a quite a number themselves, so we'll have to see what a Sephiroth can do in this next yep. match. This next match, because you know we talked about how much we've played against uh, Sephiroth before. We might get to see the other end of that here. Ah, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Though the first step in all of that. We'll be figuring out what stage we go to, and we'll see how long that takes. Because, yep. as we've mentioned, that can sometimes be about as long as the battles themselves. Yep, so we will be here for about another five minutes until we fan stages. Sometimes that hasn't been an exaggeration. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, that's why we're here, right? To have yeah. fun, fill time, uh, have yep. a blast as um, uh, they try to figure out what their plan is. Yep. Um, all you need is a well-done plan, and then you can take on just about any team. And, you know, it helps to know what character they're going against for that plan. But for the very first game of each round, we do not know the other character. That's so very true. Right now, um, they don't know that they that we are throwing in a Sephiroth. Uh, unless, of course, they're watching a stream, which, if they are, uh, thanks for the views. Um, there you go. But, <laughs> so we don't know what character they're throwing in. Um because it is the first game of the yes. round. But after this round, no matter what, we will know each character yeah. going into the match. Now, I got, here's a question for you while we're waiting. Do you think they're going to send in all the same characters, or do you think they're going to try to switch it up a bit? See, 
that question is actually really difficult because we know so little about this team. That's very true. Um, but I remember I looked at the Lego S just a little bit um, before, like when they first announced the schedules, and yep. I saw that their uh, their roster was more than four people. Mm. So it's actually fairly likely, I think, that we might see someone else. Okay. It was only five. It was five people? I need to learn how to. I thought I saw like nine. I'll... I might have been looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> yep. Well, it's it, it's it's also possible that while they may have some of the same players, they might switch characters as well. That's true. So I yep. think it's I think I'm gonna go out on the limit. I'm gonna say two the same, two different. All I'm, right, I'm gonna right, make yeah. that be my um, you know what? I, throw out I there. I think you're onto something there. But just to be just to have a little bit of a difference in the bet. I'm going to go with three of the same, one different. Three of the same, one different. You know, if they have five um, uh, people and they've thrown in four, that means that one extra person switches in, the other three play their same characters. Uh, it's yep. a very... It's a pretty safe bet. I would say so. But it is counting on nobody having a secondary. That is very true. It's also... There's also the possibility that they just keep all the same players. If all it takes is one person being sick to throw off our, um, uh, yep. whole, our whole planning here on this little bet we've done. So yep. we will have to see. We will have so, to... What do, you, what do you guys in chat think? We're throwing uh, the bet to you guys. What do you guys think? <laughs> if anybody has any thoughts on it, on how many of the same characters, we can only see up to four of the same characters. So just pick a number, one through four, yep. or I guess zero through four, and that'll be the number of characters you think are, are the same. Yep. So zero through four, send it on there, and we'll take we'll take a look afterwards, and we'll call out anybody who we see that's right. Yep. My, yeah. my bet is one different. My bet is one different, three the same. Yep. Your bet's two different. Let's see. It looks like the, it looks like the other team is ready to go and has picked their stage. It's like uh, it. Either that or they've picked random and are waiting for us to pick the stage for them. Hey, you know, random stages makes it interesting. You're not <laughs> wrong. You are not wrong because is this is this um, uh, our yeah this is our arena so we so we have control over what the random stages are here yep. so uh, we will see. But it does look like they're ready to go. Um, we might be having some. Last second deliberations, just to cool down the nerves before we get into it. Looks yep. like we are getting right. ready though, so we should be headed pretty soon. Yep. Right. Just that last second, you know, oorah pumping up as well yep. can make a big difference before a game if you can get yourself in that correct mindset for it. Yep. But it does look like my favorite stage has been selected. Please. Yes. That's quite nice. That's quite nice. Ready? Oh. Ah. And <laughs> to everyone who picked, to all, right. all the people Dude. who haven't responded yet, uh, it looks like <laughs> we are seeing a um, uh, different uh, character already. So if you picked uh, four right. different characters, you are wrong. Now we just have to have no new different characters. And I, I got this. Yep. All righty. So starting off here, we see a very interesting matchup because we have probably the best sword zoner versus one of the best just zoner zoners in the entire game. Very big sword, but you know, is it really going to matter? Projectile versus sword. And now, on top of that, I mean, we're going to have to be careful here, because just like how we were talking, we have experience. They're going to have experience in this matchup as well. Very true, very true. And we can already see a little bit of that experience coming to play, because this Samus seems to know what, what moves can punish and what moves can't. Yep. Um, on top of that, we do have some amount of Samus experience here ourselves. So <laughs> yeah, we, have, we have some, yeah. Just a bit, just a bit. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Um, so. What's interesting is I actually don't think I've ever seen a Samus ult, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a bad. I one. like it. <laughs> oh, and immediately we see that up throw coming out and being able to get the kill there. Uh, like we said, light character. Shout out to early. last year, hype up throw. <laughs> oh yes, and immediately 44% on a light character. That is a lot of damage. Yep, getting a ton of mileage out of this stock is the Samus. So we're going to see what Pi can do to try to bring this back. Yep. But the Samus seems to have just got his number on a lot of these options, knowing what yep. he wants to do. With Sephiroth, though, sometimes all it takes is that one correct move to be able to throw it. And that was really good because that was actually able to reset neutral decently well, too, on top of that. Oh, being able to bait out the up B so you can um, uh, land the up air. It's very nice. Very nice, but trying to land. Manages to air dodge through the uh, up air, though, which that up air covers so much space. It really does. Uh, it is slow, and it does not have an auto cancel window. Fun it fact. One of the few moves that really don't, and it's only one hit, which means if you get the air dodge, 
and are able to land past it, you can do some damage like we see here, taking a second stock. But Pi at a pretty big disadvantage here. Has not taken a stock yet, but has lost two of his, but you know, has a lot of percent on the stock, so all he needs is one stock, but the Samus has got his number on a lot of these jump reads. Uh, Being able to get past the ledge though is really good. Thankfully to um, uh, thankfully to help here, we see the wing coming out um, uh, quite early compared to the other stocks due to the percent difference here and the stock difference, meaning that he's able to have that more powered up extra jump, extra damage, and um, uh, super armor on the smash attacks much earlier here. It also makes him a bit faster, if I remember right. I like believe so. Uh, kind of like Cloud Limit, which makes sense given that they're both from the same game. Yep. Um... So Wing, definitely a good advantage here, but does not matter, manages to catch oh. missed tech. So now the rolls, we see a bit of a roll reversal here. The first game, we ended up uh, three stocking on the first game, so now they have turned it around and done the same back. So yeah. now it's our turn to see if we can uh, do any better than they did. Yes, Samus is a difficult character if you cannot quite catch up, catch them and figure out what they're doing. And so being able to have someone that can come in, that's especially having seen this first match. Ah, ah! it is time. Dang it. I have nope. to, do I have to play the video game? You have to play the video game. Ah! All righty. You got this. I think we have enough pro controllers that... Smack the back of my hand. I think we have enough pro controllers in there as it is, so we don't have to worry about that. But uh, that should be good. So we're going to have to see with that uh, what the plan is from here. So we know, I guess we now know who they're going to be sending in next. The question here is going to be figuring out uh, what, how they are going to handle it. And we have another person coming here on cons, on comms to take his place here. So how are you up, doing? Josh, how's it going? Oh, doing well, doing well. Enjoying commentary. I have missed it for too, too long. That's nice. I think this might be my first time commentating here. Oh, so, yeah. glad to have you on. We got two, got two people for their first time here on commentary, but uh, it'll be a blast, right? It'll be all right. <clears throat> so uh, we got <clears throat> um, Wes going in here with yes. the pit or the... Probably the pit, right? Either pit, pit. either pit or dark pit. The question is which here, and I think in this matchup, while there's not too much of a difference, I'm willing to bet that I think the slightly extended uh, reflect frame on uh, side B for dark pit is going to be what makes the difference here. And it looks like that is the case as he has selected dark pit. And now we'll see what stage he goes to. And it all depends on what the previous bands were as well. So we know his favorite stage may be a uh, small battlefield, but if they ban that, then there's not too much we can do. And it looks like that may have been the case as we have final destination here. Now, due to the three stock, neither one of them are going to be losing anything. So they'll just both be jumping straight into the match. Yep. So I know we talked about we have some experience in this matchup, but how does Dark Pit do against Samus? What do you think? So it's a very interesting matchup here. Um, Pit, thankfully, um, has a decent amount of tools to deal with it between a pretty good reflector um, in both down B and side B when it decides to work. Um, on top of that, being a floaty heavy character can sometimes mean that Pit's combos are easier to hit. But you still have all the range of a Samus combined with their very good get off me tool and up B, which can be also quite nice. Now. Um, Samus has also loved to kill off the top, which is probably why we've, seen, we've picked a stage here that do not that does not require uh, any platforms. Despite how so they can sometimes be nice for Pit as well. Ooh, catch him on the regrab. He's still gonna yep. Oh, oh my what a goodness! Air. Okay, this is a very very good Samus we're seeing here, able to come out and do some cooking. Um, we will have to answer them back, oh. and we do immediately with the spike. Wow, what a Gets good way right to answer back. back. Very, very nice. Alrighty. We'll see. They are both extremely even. One opening from either of them will either um, uh, further this lead or bring it right back. So we will have to see. We see really good um, a bait and punish game coming out from the Samus, being able to know what in general is going to work. Very patient ledge options there, allowing to get up and catch that option there. I'm starting to wonder why this Samus didn't play game one. That's a very good he question. He so far looks like their best player. 
Yeah, by far from what we've seen. Um, perhaps they were just trying to make sure we couldn't adapt to them quickly enough, but uh, they are very aggressive as well, going for that double down air there. Um, we'll have to see where what we're able to do here. Sometimes all it takes is a little bit of time to adapt. Um, with a character like Samus, who loves to keep themselves far away, um, uh, usually not too close to the action. Sometimes all it takes is a little time to be able to learn their strategy and their game plan, and that can be all it takes to just unravel them. We'll have to see if, um, uh, in this match, if Wes here will be able to unravel this plan themselves. Oh! What a good jump up reflect on that. And we see as trying to hold the aggress aggression here, but unfortunately just barely gets blocked like that. Ooh. Now, oh, now. Oh, dash tackle do it. Just barely. Now, uh, this is also the, uh, this is a very interesting thing here. So uh, like we've said, this is only the, wow, that's such a long grab. I think even the Samus wasn't ready for that <laughs> one to grab. Yeah, it's really important for Wes here to close out this stock right now before yes. he uh, takes too much extra credit damage. Yeah. If, if we can at the very least get out get out this stock, I mean, we've seen what our other players can possibly do here. So hopefully we'll be able to see some good work come in. And that is the pit kill throw coming in. Being able to take that stock. Now go, now being even with uh, in stock count, but not quite even yet in the... Ooh, good timing on that to be able to land the uh, neutral air there just in time for the grab. So it is very close, but with pit, sometimes all you need is one good opening to get a good amount of percent on. Ooh, the parry was potentially yet super close there. Ooh. Probably tried to parry it and just unfortunately was a little off on the time. Lands a good pack here. Ready to follow up. Unfortunately, sometimes, uh, as we've been told many a times, Pit just decides not to work. But as we've seen here, only a couple openings here that we've seen. And immediately this game is back to even. And so this is extremely close here. At this point, it is seeing who can really land their last big hit needed. Whether it's a, whether it's a kill confirm, uh, one solid hit. Now it's not quite enough yet. But every little bit of percent gets them just slightly closer, especially with Samus charge shot. You don't need all that much percent before it starts killing. Little fundies oh. here. Yep. <laughs> And now the scary thing here as well is that there's so many things from both that will kill. Oh, and the charge shot. Oh, just that barely just able it. to kill, going right through the arrow, unfortunately. Uh, now, thankfully, there there were two stocks that were able to be taken there. So yeah. um, it's not it's not the end of the world. We just need to get someone in there to take that last one. And if we get one of our good players, and hopefully we just get through the rest of the players, we'll see. Like this is only yeah. their first new their first character change. Um, Perhaps this character was in the bathroom, or this person was in the bathroom game one. Uh, they came back just in time, apparently, to start off this one and start off strong at that. I'm going to so. guess this is not someone secondary. This is a new player, for sure. Yes, that is that would be my guess there. Um, perhaps they thought that the game was just too far gone just to wait till the second game. Less I don't time know. to adapt. It's, I don't know. Whatever the case is, now they are here, and now we are dealing with them. Um, with West down for the, with West down for the count this game, you'll have to see who we are going to be subbing into, and with that, it looks like we are going to be going into bits, which we will see what the stage pick here as well. I was curious what the stage pick last time going to FD, um, but this time we'll have to see what they go back to, and like the Smash players that they are, we find ourselves once again at PS2. It's uh, really important for Foot Fitz here to um, try and close this out with all three of his stocks so he yes. can make a little bit of a run against the other characters. Yes. Um, thankfully, the Samus does, in fact, lose two stocks here, which is really um, uh, big for this one, uh, which means that hopefully Fitz will just have to be able to take one and will hopefully only have to lose one. We'll have to hopefully have to lose none. Yeah. But if I they think have if to we go, go out with two or three, like we're in an okay spot. Yes. Not ideal, but doable. Exactly. Um, what we've seen, the taunt from both, and the game is off. And what makes this interesting is that, unlike last game where we had a camper or a, a zoner, not ca not necessarily camper, but a zoner, versus a more of a rushdown style character and sortie character, both of these characters have the ability to do some pretty good zoning and being able to both have their charged up um, uh, weapons. And I would, both of them are pretty good charge ups as well. 
Um, the, there's much more versatility, of course, in Pac-Man, having multiple options to, to kind of do what they want. And we'll see possibly one of those coming up soon. He's got the Galga. We'll see what he does with it. Yep. I don't think he lost it there. We'll I see. Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> Able to catch it again because oh. of because of the fact that he got hit. Very interesting. Um, we see it coming through. Try to bait out the shield there. Unfortunately, the Samus used their movement speed to get around it. Both of these characters have grabs that you got to be really careful throwing yeah. out. I think it is rather unfortunate that the, the grab game is very unfortunate for um, uh, Pac-Man here. Um, because while his can grab spot dodges, Samus usually, the, the down part, or the bad part about their grab is that it's usually a little slow. But when the other grab is Pac-Man, you don't have to worry as much about that. We see the Samus is getting plenty of time. Oh, just barely outside the reach, able to get that charge shot off. They are standing just at the right spacing for this one. We'll see what they're able to do here. Good weights. We like to see the patience here. Oh, just barely getting nicked by the very last hit. This is very close. Both of them could pr um, uh, pretty easily take it here. Very smart going high here to avoid all those hits. Now we do see as well the fire are always some fire hydrant shenanigans that are possible as well. I've seen so many in my day that it's always possible. Oh! Why did they delay? I, I think it's just such a strong part. hit that um, uh, when you get a strong oh, hit like that, it delays it slightly, stun. which is really unfortunate. Usually when you get hit stun like that, it doesn't matter as much because both. <laughs> I did not know the. Oh! Uh, experience and stun. of course, right after they lo he loses the stock, he's able to get it back. That is yeah. the crew battle classic here. He finally finds that forward smash. He was using a lot at the end there. Yep. Um, I was baffled by that fire hydrant. Yeah, it 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 played mind games. I think with everybody. Um, uh, so. No, no one was quite ready for what that fire hydrant was about to do. And so with that, we find ourselves moving on to the next game. A little bit of a hole here down four stocks, um, but it's still very doable. Um, yes. Fitz, very solid player with the Pac-Man. And if they're playing, you know, three of the same characters from game one, it's very doable. But yes. I'm, I am nervous to see who plays next. Yes, we'll, we'll see how that how this bet goes. I yeah, don't know if we're even um, going to be able to see all four. Uh, but. I'm start, I'm starting to be worried if the bet starts going um, uh, too far my way here, past past what I said. So <laughs> we'll have to see what they go with next. Um, that was a very strong uh, Samus player. This is where we find out that somehow Laird got over there and decided to <laughs> screw with us for a game. Uh, but not qu not quite, not quite. But um, still very very. Very, very interesting start to this match. We'll have to see where it goes from here. So, uh, what do you think? Do you think they're going to send back one of the characters we saw last time, or do you think they're going to pull out another new character to try and wreck uh, havoc with? I think it's going to be the same character from game one. Alrighty, so you're with Laird. And it looks like we are, you know, I was talking about Smash players, and that's true. And oh, we see no, another new character new <laughs> going back to PS2, but also going to a brand I, new character. I've... So I was the person in the production uh, behind the camera here who told them that they only had five players. I thought that was true, but maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that's not accurate. It's possible that they. It's possible it's yeah. the same player. Alrighty, now we'll have to see here. Right off the bat, a pretty oh, bold read. Forward smash there. That trying to go for that oh. massive up smash there. Um, Able to get around it relatively easily, but now we get, now we find ourselves back in neutral, where Palutena's pretty good as a neutral character. Has some really good tools here. And so being able to avoid that with... Pa oh! Oh, what a counter. Reflected the bell, which is pretty crazy. big charges coming out. Oh! oh my <laughs> God! Massive counter! Fitz what tried to respond with kill? a big hit of his own, but the Palutena was ready going for the counter. So we'll have to see how the, how the, he's able to adapt around that because when you get characters that love going for the big counters like that, all you gotta do is hold it a little bit longer. Oh, and there you go. You see the grab Just like out. that. Ooh, the backer. Ooh, throws it the wrong way. But just try, just getting it ready for the next charge. We'll see because we, we there's a bit of ground to make, make up here, so we'll have to see. Oh, let it. They are just they are trying grab, to reflect grab will all of be this. Counter. Oh, able to just punish yeah, that early up with a forward smash. You know, it is a very, very different game uh, here already from what we saw the first time around. And very different from the Samus we were just seeing as well. So we'll have to see. That was really interesting. So the projectile that went through was able to clank with the 
uh, forward tilt, allowing the second move to hit. Oh, just barely not hitting, and just Ooh. barely missing with the grab. Now we'll have to see um, uh, how Fitz is able to avoid these projectiles as well here. So we see all the being able to identify the fact that they are just countering a bunch and wow. able to punish the counter on the projectile. Bell is one of the few projectiles that work in a way that you can really punish it well like that. So that was a really good, um, uh, that was a really good punish there from Fitz coming out. And we already have seen a lead in oh, this match. Throw. You know, a back throw from Palutena is going to kill pretty soon here, too. That is also very true. Palutena has some really strong kill options, and it's just, once again, going for really powerful options. Starting to go for, I couldn't tell if that was a counter or a, or an up air, but either way, just barely being able to snuff it out here. And we see they are just, they got the one counter on the F smash and are hungry for another. And I'm willing to bet we're going to see, oh, oh, really wanted to follow up on that. Got to be careful here. They're not quite ap applying the um, uh, pressure after um, um, keeping Fitz and Shield here. Oh! oh! Gets the reflector on the bell. At, on the already landed bell as well, which is really interesting. Um, so we'll have to see what they're what they're able to do here with this. Oh, uses the water to project the, to project themselves as well. Who just being able to dodge that? We see so many close calls here. Eventually. We see it come out and back to the screen after a strong forward smash. So that was able to bring the back a good bit Four to in our six favor. Went from a deficit of four stocks to two. So we're chipping away. Um, if I had to guess, that was probably a same player, different character. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I mean, we could, well, we can always check it later as well. See what um, I'll see what it yeah. says. Maybe they were able to find a way to update it or something. If they had some late arrivals yeah. on the scene. So. Either way, the point still stands that that is uh, two new characters. Now, the, here's the question. Did even I predict too few, and they're going to come out with a third? Are they going to go, uh, what was that? I believe Trine that just pulled out pretty much just... And they're immediately going back out, and we see, finally, I believe we see a repeat. And this is a matchup that Fitz has some good comfort in, but being down two stocks, that is still quite a deficit. Will he be able to make up the difference and finish off this Captain Falcon? We will have to see after these Lost Stocks. There he goes. Okay. And with that, we get back here and one taunt later from each, and they are back to the races. And immediately, this Captain Falcon is sprinting out the gates. Wow. Being able to hit with all those hits, but still eventually being able to get punished for it. And... Boom! Some immediately strong hits, followed wow. by just the gimp that early. What a strong start to this match from Fitz. There's not much the Falcon player could have done there, except maybe save the jump. But, I mean, not unless you faced a Pac-Man that often, you don't know what they're doing. Just like that with the jab block and the F smash. Crazy start. He's really converting on all these combos, too. Oh! He, he actually hits that. He hits the hit on that as well. This Falcon player, as we saw before, loved to go for the big hits just like this. And when you're ready for him, you can hit him back, back just as hard, if not harder. Throws the bell in the hopes of catching him, but honestly, half the time you don't need to catch him. Just change up their game plan. Uses oh. the water to push himself back. What an amazing play from Fitz there. We were Knowing back to even. And a little taunt from the Falcon there. I think he's just appreciating how cool that play was. I can't say I blame him. That is a another good hit, um, uh, clip there, I would say. Really nice to see. And we see the water doing its work, just absolutely shoving back the Falcon. He is just not able to deal with this projectile perfection here. And we see able to grab him right out of the side B. This is just not a matchup that this Captain Falcon wanted to see today. Ooh, still being able to... Despite the fact that he wasn't even the one that broke the Falcon, Fitz quickly got a move out to prevent it from hitting him again. Ooh. Trying to do some more projectile nonsense here. We'll see what's able to be done here. This Kevin Falcon has to figure out a way to deal with this. But when this is what you're ready for... Oh, my oh, God! Wow. Crazy hit. Up. I'm surprised that didn't kill. Being able to use the uh, hit stun after getting hit with the melon to then pull out a down smash. Pretty interesting. Wow, I'm I shocked can't that grab. grab. Oh, hits him with the 
bell doesn't get the punish. He kind of rolled into a weird. Yeah, he'd already grabbed the bell, so he couldn't really get a forward smash. But, yeah. oh, oh, my God. That is the uh, unfortunate part. But Oh, gets him. Hits him with the little fruit. Yeah, hits him with the melon. I, I guess you could say Fitz was balling on that one. <laughs> was quite baller? I'm not sure. I guess, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, a three yeah. stock, and we're back in the lead. So, yes. yeah, that's, that's pretty baller. That is quite melon baller. Alrighty. So we'll see if your uh, little bet was correct. The uh, two of the same, two different. Yeah, well, we will have to see. There's only one left. And after the last one, they were really quick to go back in there after just saying, you know, rerun on PS2. Almost makes me wonder if they, because we, we've seen a couple teams that have just kind of forgotten about bands in the past. And, you know, yeah. sometimes you just want to make sure you're trying to carry your momentum in. And so you're not even worrying about banning stages. And that might be the case once again, as it looks like they've already jumped back in. And we see the pit. Does that count as a different character? Can I have that one? No. Different Dang character. It. Oh, <laughs> Echo. darn Echo characters, man. Usually I'm not one to complain about the number of characters in this game, but dang nabbit. But with that, we have another character that we have seen a lot of experience with, though. Usually we see the Dark Pit. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. So we can... uh, usually we see the Dark Pit here, but we still have plenty of experience against the normal pit as well. As we can see immediately with a nice 21%, trying to follow up off that. And so... We immediately see a down smash, roll down smash from the pit as well. They are throwing out swinger moves. They want to make sure that they can take this one hit, this one game, and try to run off with the with the lead that will give them. Uh, Fitz is doing his best to try to take as much as possible off him, and with the experience that he has in this matchup, it's really possible that he can take it all right here. You got to be careful of the reflectors though in this matchup, but we'll have to see how well the pit is able to use that like that able to hop around the uh, grab in order to get an F smash but what's for the aerial for less end lag for you know you're exchanging less um, uh, end lag for less power but we didn't get punished there so you can't complain can't complain about it board smash narrowly this is very narrowly those orbiters are starting to are starting to help a bit we'll start to see if he's able to get any big reflection the palutena was able to get some big reflection while they were in Oh, there we go. We see it didn't hit the shield, so it wasn't nearly as good as what we saw before. Oh, oh. right idea. Just unfortunately a little off on the timing. So we'll have to see if, if um, uh, we're able to see some adaption to that here. Spacing. Yes, just barely avoiding the side beam, making sure it doesn't hit the shield. So because when they hit the ground, that's when it's better because then you can get the better punish on it. No, we saw the pit in um, game one overextend on the side Bs a little bit, and the Roy was able to um, like read those out in space. And, oh, oh! Catch them. Good time in there on the forward smash. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately for Stonehill there, uh, Pitt's upbeat does not have a hitbox, passing right through Pac-Man there. So that was not able to do very much, and just barely missing the uh, jab locks on that to get the forward smash. Well, it wouldn't kill at this percent. It'd still be pretty nice to see that damage on the board. Especially when you're at 129, like we see Fitz here. Uh, 136, as we see here. Um, there's a bit of a difference here in percent. And, oh, the pit dash attack being a little stale, just missing. And so we'll see here. Using that bit of boost from the fire hydrant to get himself closer to center stage. Each right... Oh, my goodness. Eight right through that arrow. Ooh. The air, I think the arrow popped that that one there, but thankfully Fitz being, was ready for that shielding and blocking the fire hydrant hit. Uh oh. Side B coming. Yep. Shield is throwing out a side B. Yep. We'll have to see. Right now he has to play extremely carefully because we're starting to hit the point where even Pitt's uh, grabs are going to be doing a number. As oh. I say that. As I say that. And with that, we make it to the very last round here. Bringing it extremely close here. Coming down uh, to a nail biter. Yes, Three very two. much so. Um, but we still have one stock lead, and that is all you need sometimes. So with that, we'll have to see who they go into next to try to finish off this last stock here. I have no clue. And on top of that, we'll have to see what stage oh. they go back into as well. I thought I heard some knocking. Um, and so we'll have to like, see if they... They, they, want, they want us? <laughs> they want yeah, right, right, right there. 
they're ready for the two of us to come in and tear. You know, the, Ka- the Kazio, they're never ready for the Kazio here. They'll come in and just electric god wind fist to oblivion. To oblivion. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who they send in next, though. But if they can get the two stocks off, that's sometimes all you need. And with the last pick here, we'll also see if they continue to stay on the same stage or if our players are actually going to go for the bands here. It looks like they are going for the bands because it looks like we are going off of PS2 onto a slightly different stage. And, of course, doing the music counter pick as well. you got to choose a song that you enjoy to play to. Small battlefield it is. You get, every, you get the choice of every song in the game while you're there, pretty much. And we see, as the last person, Alex comes in to do their best to clean this up. Now, Alex, in particular, is roommates with, the, with our pigs. So, if anyone is going to have some experience with this character, it is going to be Alex. Uh, unfortunately, Pitt never learned how to read, so we'll have to see if they can make some in this game here. And so we start off pretty nice, um, uh, pretty nice neutral here from both characters, uh, getting getting ready, trying to make sure and feel each other out, trying to see what they can do. Nice starting combo here for a solid 30%, 33% coming out from Alex here. And now we see some ledge trapping, and when Alex gets his ledge trapping in, there's not oh, much yeah. that can be it's done sometimes. City. Like you see there with the returning boomerang, absolutely insane damage being done there. Uh, that forward air hits like a truck. Uh, first it hits you with the front, then it hits you with the cargo bed. With that two-parter on that. But now we see them back in the neutral here. Able to land a boomerang, but not not the correct, quite the right angle to get the follow-up on that. We see the retreating nares as well, which are very hard to deal with. And it's just baiting and punishing and waiting for a single wrong move from this pit. And now we start to see the ledge weight options. Resetting the bomb to try to catch whatever this pit wants to do. And just barely getting um, outspaced by that side B. So, so close. Ooh, lands the up tilt there. It's really nice. This pit is close to death. It's not going to take much. And that is it. The pit tried to land a combo, but I think the Link was at too low a percent for that to work. Or or just got unfortunate. And that was the only opportunity that Alex needed to take the stock. He's being a dwarven nightmare for them here that we see. Lands the boomerang, catch the falling option. I've been hit with that many a times as well. Tries to catch him, but Pitt has a plenty of recovery to be able to get around that bomb, but doesn't necessarily make you immune to it. So we'll have to see. Especially online like this, trying to get the tech was not easy. So we'll see here what happens. Oh my god! Oh, Just nice. stood there and waited for the pit to make a mistake. And we see as he sets up the ledge trap here. Trying to get ready for whatever this pit does. And just barely misses. Now, ooh! Catching some pretty good arrow shots here. But just not enough to let just enough to let him get back. Oh, tried to go for the kill confirmed there in uh, the first hit of back air. For the bomb recovery? He got hit with the arrow, yeah. and with bomb recovery, momentum is so important. And it makes sense why that got messed up. Can't blame him there. And breaks the orbitals with that up smash, and... You gotta be careful when you break orbitals, but doesn't matter here as the up B is going to take the stock, take the game, and take the set for Valparaiso Esports. Well, congrats to us. Woo! Well played Stonehill. Game two was uh, definitely a lot closer. Yes. Uh, Sam has played really well. Uh, gave definitely. us a run for our money, but uh, I think we're feeling good over here. So definitely. I think we played really well overall as a yeah. team. Everyone got their share. So. Yes. Yeah. And we we're able to see a classic example of being able to get around a, a really tough opponent and not allowing that to get you down and being able just to pop back up and recover yourself back into a proper mindset, proper games play until eventually we're able to have two stocks left while they have none. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that does it for us uh, here today. Um, yep. Thank you, Josh, for hopping on the mic. And, oh, it's a blast. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Alrighty, see ya.